morning, we're going to make the end cap for the C-clamp assembly today for the on-shape remediation assignment. Um, this is it already created, um, and we're going to do some uh, some other new-ish features. Um, there's one in particular called the hole tool that we need to go over in order to do this. I'm going to go over some of the other stuff pretty quickly to make this, um, the things that we've already done before, so we can focus on that hole tool. So to start, I'm going to make a cylinder that is 0.75 inches in diameter. That's 0.3125 inches high. So I need to make a new part studio. I'm going to go ahead and rename it so I know that this is my end cap. Start a new sketch on the top plane. View normal. And I'm going to make that circle. So from there, and then we need to make a diameter dimension that is 0.75. Okay, then I need to extrude, and we said that distance was 0.3125, like that. So next we're going to add that chamfer that's on the bottom. If you look at the drawing, it says it's a 0.1 inch chamfer all the way around. So again, that's in the features menu. There's a chamfer on that edge. We want that distance to be 0.1. All right, so now let's get started on the whole tool. So this single feature is going to be able to make this entire weird geometry that's inside. And it's all based on this dimension here. So we know some of it where it says diameter 0.188 through. That's referring to that center hole, that the smaller one. So the diameter of that hole is 0.188. It goes all the way through. The second part is what's very new. That angle means it's a countersunk. That's a, it's a hole that has this kind of tapered edge on it. So what it's typically used for is something like a wood screw or um, anything like that that we want to sit flush. Um, but in this case, it's to accept that threaded rod that goes inside of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by making a sketch because we just need to have the origin located on this plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a single point or you can do a circle or anything, just right there on the origin. So now what I have, if I view normal, or uh, isometric, sorry, I've got a single point there, and that's where my circle is going to sit. So I'm going to leave the sketch, and then in the features menu, there's this hole button. Some of you have already found it, um, but maybe have used it incorrectly. The reason we've just been extruding circles instead of using this is that the hole tool is used as if you're drilling a hole. Um, and if you're not going all the way through, it actually leaves a taper on the end like a drill bit would leave. It doesn't make flat cylinders. Um, and it's got a lot of extra features that we just haven't used. So in the whole menu, it says first no hole points are selected. Let's select that point. The style in this case is a countersunk hole. See how it gives us that taper? A counter bore is, uh, it makes a big cylinder on top of a small cylinder. So imagine we were trying to hide a big bolt instead of a tapered screw. So now we can add, we don't need to look at any of this other stuff. We're not changing the direction. It does go all the way through. If, it set, if it's set to blind, switch it to through. The diameter, that's the diameter of the hole itself. So that's that 0.188. The countersink diameter, oh, it didn't save, 0.188. The countersink diameter then is the width of the tipped part. So that's what this next one is, this 0.625. And then lastly, we need the counter sink angle, and it says it's right there, 115 degrees. Just like that. Hit the check mark, and we are done. There's our end piece. So then what we can do, the problem says to make the material aluminum 6061, which is the most common uh, like multi-purpose aluminum. Let's rename our part. This is our end cap. And let's check the mass just so that we are all on the same page. My mass with it being aluminum is 0 0.01 pounds. 0 0.01 pounds. And that is it for the end cap.